right, so we're looking at how to um, construct a rotation of an object today. Rotations are an isometry, like reflections and translations are. They preserve segment measures, they preserve angle measures, just going to change the location of the object. So today we're looking at rotations. Now a rotation requires three things. First of all, you have to know which direction you're rotating. So here we see counterclockwise, whereas down here on number two I see clockwise. So that tells us counterclockwise, remember like a clock, goes the opposite direction of a clock. So where the hands of a clock would rotate this direction, counterclockwise is going to go this way. Whereas clockwise will go this direction, like a clock does. The other thing that we have to be given besides the direction is an angle measurement. That's going to tell us how far to rotate it. Um, do I rotate it all the way upside down, which would be 180 degrees? Do I go a quarter of a turn, which would be 90 degrees, or some other number? In this case, we see 180 degrees, so not quite a quarter of a rotation. And the last thing we have to have is a point to rotate it around. That's basically your pivot point. So if you think about um, people that play basketball, for example, when they say they have a pivot foot, that means one foot is planted and everything else, the rest of their body turns around that foot. So this we're looking at as direction, degrees for how far or how much of a turn, and then a point of rotation to turn about, our pivot point. All right, so I've got three different colors that I'm gonna be using. I'll use one for A, one for B, and one for C. And that way you can at least kind of tell them visually apart whenever we rotate each piece. The other thing that you're going to need, you don't have to have colored pencils, but you can. The other thing you need to have is a protractor. You gotta have a way to measure your angles. And we need a compass, and the compass is used um, for distance measurements. We don't, we're not going to use a ruler or anything. It can be done with a ruler, but we're not going to do it that way today. All right, so the first thing I want to do, you pick a point. It doesn't matter which point you start with, but that's the first point I'm going to rotate. So I'm going to rotate point A first. I want to take that point and connect it to my point of rotation. Since my point of rotation is X, I just connect it with a nice little segment there use a straight edge. We don't want to see them being used in any other way, shape, or form. All right, now I want to take this, think of it like a segment, and I want to spin that segment counterclockwise, and I want to spin it 80 degrees counterclockwise. And that's where your protractor comes in. So I'm going to take the protractor, set the pivot point, that X, right in that center of that hole, right here, and I want to line up this as if it would stretch up here to zero. Now on my protractor, there's this nice little line. I've set that line right on top of that segment that I just drew. So from zero, I want to go 80 degrees this direction. Remember, I'm going to 80, so I'm looking at the small numbers here. It's an acute angle. And I'm going to make a little mark right there where 80 degrees is. Now I'm going to take my straight edge line it up with X and that nice little mark we just made and I'm going to make kind of a dashed line or a light line. I don't necessarily need that to be very dark. You just need to be able to see it and you can just barely see it right here on my paper. Okay. If you want to make it darker you can. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to make this one just a little bit darker so you can see it a little bit better. That's a little bit better. Okay, so this is my 80 degree angle for point A. Now I gotta figure out, I know when I rotate it, this distance that X and A are apart needs to remain the same over here when I find A prime. So I'm gonna take my compass, put the pivot point on X, move the other end so that it's at A. Let me get my hands in the way here. And I wanna make sure I've got it set at that distance. So I've got pivot point on X, pencil point on A, and I'm going to spin that over here and see where that intersects that segment that I drew before. So this intersection point then becomes A prime. Okay, now that's what we've done to reflect point A. So just for review, the first thing we did was we chose a point and we drew a segment
from x, our pivot place, to a, our point of rotation to the first point we're going to rotate. So we drew segment xa. Then we measure an angle. That's where we set this line in place. Remember to go counterclockwise on this one. And then lastly, use the compass to find point A prime. Okay, we're going to repeat those same three steps, but now we're going to do it for point B, and then we'll finally do it for point C. Okay, so for point B, draw a segment XB from the point of rotation to the point you're going to rotate. Ooh, that kind of smeared. Alright, measure off the angle. I want to go counterclockwise, so I'm going to put my pivot point in that nice little hole. Line up my line here so that it's right on top of that. And measure over 80 degrees and make a little mark. Okay. Counterclockwise, put your protractor on the left side. If I were going clockwise, I'd put my protractor over here and measure this direction. Okay, so now that I've got that point, draw the segment connecting X and that new little point we just drew. So I know point B prime is somewhere on that segment. Last step, use the compass to get B prime. Okay, so measure the distance with your compass from X, your pivot point, to point B. I don't have mine quite far enough apart yet. It's closer. It's like I'm afraid to move it too far. Oh, too far. Come back. Okay, so there's B. Swing it around and make a little mark over here. If you want to, you can draw that whole semicircle part, that arc in, but you don't necessarily need it. We just need that much of it right where they intersect. So this point becomes B prime. Now I want to do the same thing for C, and then we'll connect it to make our triangle. So, draw a segment from the point of rotation to the point you're going to rotate. There. I missed that, didn't I? There we go. Okay, measure the angle, put the pivot point in there. Line it up so that this point's up here at zero. Get mine all set just right. There we go. Now this one's kind of nice because it my C actually hits up there at zero, so that's good. Go around to where it's 80 degrees and make a mark. Draw a line from the point of rotation X over to that mark. And then lastly, use the compass. Extend mine just a bit. So from X to C. Almost there. I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist about these things. Okay, and then rotate it around. Whoops! Rotate it around. Got it caught up on my hand. Rotate over there to where they intersect and mark that as C prime. Okay, so we now have A prime, B prime, and C prime. And I want to use my pen or my pencil and draw that in then. So A prime to C prime. B prime to C prime, and lastly, A prime to B prime. And it doesn't matter what order you connect them in, as long as you get them all done. Okay, so now we see that rotation about point X of triangle ABC going counterclockwise. Okay, I'm
I'm going to uh, let you do the last three or try the last three on your own. You'll have time tomorrow after the testing class to work on that if you need to.